Aside from the amazing pool of talents and personalities, Hollywood is known for its overly dramatic themes. Just a small glimpse into a celebrity's life could reveal the most unspeakable things. This is why the media dedicated itself to finding the tantalizing scandals so the world would know. But what if some scandals were so terrible that lives were taken just so it would remain a secret, or scandals so awful secret transactions had to happen to keep it secret? Be careful, your favorite celebrity may not be the saint you think they are. Joan Crawford's Private Tapes Well, there is no telling just how dirty some actresses can be with their lovers within the confines of their bedrooms. But what happens when these private erotic activities are filmed and then made public? Back in the days of old Hollywood, it could probably end a career, and like the film she would star in, Joan Crawford found herself in quite a dramatic dilemma. You see, in the golden age of Hollywood, Joan Crawford was a force to reckon with. More than just acting, she was an entire brand, pulling in fans and those who adored her with her poise, elegance, and beauty. By all ramifications, she was more than a star. She was a force, relentless in her pursuit of greatness. Her name was whispered with a mix of awe and apprehension in the corridors of power. But as it is with old Hollywood stars, something horrible was coming for Crawford, one she could never have seen coming. Let's go back in time to the year 1945. As always, the Hollywood spotlight shone on Crawford as she clutched an Oscar for the leading role in Mildred Pierce. It was a moment of triumph, solidifying her status as Hollywood royalty. But amid all the celebrations and congratulations, a horrible scandal was brewing one that could tarnish her image forever. First, it started as rumors swirling around Crawford's dark past. Apparently, before the zenith of her stardom, she had engaged in Sony questionable things, and somehow it was coming back to haunt her. There were talks of a film about to be released, but this film was not like one of her regular films. While Crawford was in, it was supposed to be an intimate bedroom moment for commercial purposes. The title of the film even made its way into the rumors, Velvet Lips it was called. Now some believed it was nothing but gossip, a fabrication of envy and malice, but others swore it was real, a glimpse into a darker side of Crawford's ascent to fame. But here is where this story gets even worse. The tape was real, and they were threatening Crawford that it'd be released soon if she didn't abide by their monetary terms. You'd think that the mastermind behind the tape in question was an evil and greedy person who hated Crawford. But it turned out that the figure behind the release of the tape was Crawford's brother, and he was willing to sell the tape to the highest bidder, a horrible betrayal and blackmail. Now, as you might imagine, Crawford was very unsettled about the whole thing, even when she was on honeymoon with her new husband, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Douglas, she couldn't escape the effects of the brewing scandal. Then, the threat stopped, and her brother decided to show everyone he was serious, so in the ultimate act of betrayal, he sent a copy of the tape to her studios, and now things got a lot more interesting. The studio knew they couldn't let something like this get out. It had ruined Crawford's image, and then they'd stop making money off her. The evidence was damning. Something had to be done. When the rumors became too much, any other celebrity may have fallen under the weight of the allegations and scorn. But Crawford was no stranger to adversity. With steely resolve, she denied the accusations until her final breath, her words a shield against the relentless onslaught of scandal. Then, a new FBI file digging for the truth uncovered proof that contains evidence that the studio paid Crawford's brother as much as $100,000 to stop him from leaking the film. This is supported by mysterious payments made by Crawford to the studio, which are supposedly repayment for the blackmail money. And so till today, not a copy of the file remains in existence. Alfred Hitchcock's Abuse of Power now we all know the legendary Alfred Hitchcock, don't we? His mastery of filmmaking was undeniable, and his name was synonymous with suspense, intrigue, and cinematic innovation. But beneath all that talent, Hitchcock was not entirely a saint. There was an evil and dark side to this amazing filmmaking genius, and careers were ruined because of it. 
As he got to the pinnacle of his career, multiple cases of perversion and abuse of power were rumored, but no one knew anything for sure, and the ones who did were too scared to speak up because Alfred was way too rich and powerful. He had a lot of other powerful people on his payroll and could easily pay to have news of his excesses hushed. Regardless, some of his victims decided to be brave and they spoke up, despite all. Take, for instance, his tumultuous relationship with actress Tippi Hedren, a tale that unraveled behind the scenes of The Birds, one of Hitchcock's iconic works. It's said that Hedron rebuffed Hitchcock's inappropriate advances, and so a clash between the two ensued. Hitchcock didn't take this rejection very well, and not only was he upset, but he was also poised to end her career forever, and he had the money and power to do so. Reports surfaced of him actively working to derail Hedron's career, a chilling reminder of the power dynamics at play in the industry. The drama reached its zenith in the form of The Girl, a 2012 film that delved into the toxic dynamic between Hitchcock and Hedron, laying bare the ugliness that lurked beneath the surface of cinematic genius. And yet, despite the revelations, accountability remained elusive. In a candid moment on the Awards Chatter podcast in 2021, Hedron's granddaughter, Dakota Johnson, lamented the lack of consequences faced by Hitchcock for his actions. But the question remains, why was this so? Well, reports are that even when Tippy came out to talk about it, Alfred paid some media houses to keep it shut, and others to spread the fact that it was only a rumor, and that Tippy was a struggling actress who was trying to stomp on the Hitchcock name to be relevant. Rock Hudson's Orientation In the bygone era of old-school Hollywood, the spotlight was a double-edged sword for LGBTQ plus celebrities. Coming out meant risking not just their careers, but their very livelihoods in an industry where authenticity often took a back seat to public perception. Rock Hudson, a leading man of his time, epitomized this struggle, his life a delicate dance between truth and illusion. And so, we have Hudson, a talented actor who effortlessly slipped into roles that were considered strong and masculine. From playing dashing leading men to charming Lotharios, his on-screen personas exuded a charisma that captivated audiences worldwide, yet behind the scenes, Hudson harbored a secret that could shatter the carefully constructed facade of his public image. He was gay. As a gay man navigating the treacherous waters of Hollywood's closeted culture, Hudson lived a life of secrecy, his truth hidden beneath layers of glamour and intrigue. It was an open secret whispered in the shadows of studio backlots and lavish parties, but fiercely guarded from the prying eyes of the media. The threat of exposure hung like a sword of Damocles over Hudson's head, wielded by tabloids like Confidential Magazine, hungry for sensational headlines and salacious gossip. His private life became fodder for the insatiable appetite of the public, a pawn in the cutthroat game of fame and fortune. But perhaps the greatest betrayal came with Hudson's diagnosis of HIV in the dark days of the 1980s. In a time when the AIDS epidemic was shrouded in stigma and fear, the actor chose to shield his illness from the harsh glare of the spotlight, hiding it as hard as he could. When media personnel found out about his orientation and health challenges, he would pay them money to get them off his back and keep the news private. He held on to this secret until his dying breath in 1985. Only after that did Hudson's secrets finally spread throughout the entire world. Jean Harlow's Unborn Child She was the original blonde bombshell who was catapulted to stardom after appearing in the famous Howard Hughes's Hell's Angels. But despite this, her life was far from rosy. She married her first husband on January 18, 1927, at age 15, and was divorced a few years later. But that was not all. Her second husband lost his life in a gunshot accident, and as though the pain and misery she felt were not enough, rumors began to swirl that she was the one behind the trigger, further intensifying her misery. But eventually, she found love again, and this would have been great if it was not with a married boxer. As you might expect, the scandal became so overblown that her studio orchestrated an arranged marriage for her with cinematographer Harold Rawson. 
However, the marriage was for public consumption only, and they quietly divorced a few months later when the scandal was forgotten. Then she met William Powell. She fell for him in 1935 on the set of Reckless and wanted to get married, have a family, and give up acting. But Powell was not reckless. He had just been divorced from Carol Lombard and thought the public might not like him to marry so soon. He also made it clear that he never wanted children. Powell's caution, however, only went so far, and Harlow soon found herself pregnant. Knowing that he did not want children and that the studio would not tolerate an unmarried mother, Harlow took out the baby and paid the clinic handsomely not to leak what she did to the media. She also never told Powell what had happened. William Hart ended a life. Imagine a figure larger than life, a colossus straddling the realms of business, politics, and media. That was William Randolph Hearst, a titan whose influence stretched from the newsrooms of his vast newspaper empire to the corridors of power in America. He was the very embodiment of power and ambition, his name synonymous with wealth, authority, and some would say, ruthlessness. But behind all that, William was not as charming as he seemed to be. He had a rather tragic flaw. He was prone to fits of rage and bouts of vindictiveness. And when rumors surfaced of his beloved mistress, Marion Davies, entangled in a scandalous affair with none other than Charlie Chaplin, Hearst's legendary fury knew no bounds. Instead of confronting Chaplin head-on, Hearst devised a cunning scheme, inviting the object of his suspicion and a host of other film luminaries to join him aboard his luxurious yacht. The tension aboard the vessel must have been palpable, the air thick with unspoken accusations and uneasy glances. Now this is where Hollywood producer Thomas Ince walks into this story. He too was aboard the yacht, and his sole aim was to seek opportunities for his studio. Desperate for a lifeline, his hopes were pinned on a chance encounter that would change his fortunes forever. Little did he know, fate had other plans in store. The events that followed remain shrouded in mystery and speculation, the truth obscured by a veil of intrigue and deception. Official accounts, hastily disseminated by Hearst's newspapers, painted a picture of Incy's demise as a tragic accident, a sudden illness claiming his life despite frantic efforts to save him. But whispers of a darker truth refused to be silenced, rumors swirling of a deadly confrontation gone awry. Some claimed that Hearst, in a fit of jealous rage, had aimed Chaplin, only to strike down Ince in a tragic case of mistaken identity. According to the word on the street, this tragic incident was covered up, and all eyewitnesses were paid off to not speak or even be available for questioning. However, a secretary aboard the yacht who had seen it all added fuel to the fire, recounting to the authorities what she saw, her words echoing across the waves of scandal that rocked the Hollywood elite. But she too was allegedly bribed, and she took a sudden trip somewhere else. The Abuse of Patricia Douglas Patricia Douglas was a wannabe star. At 20, she was invited to attend an audition for MGM Studios. Unknown to her, the audition was a party thrown by Louis B. Mayer for MGM sales executives. The party had been in swing for three days by the time Douglas attended, believing that she might be getting her big break. But sadly, she was not privy to the evil inner workings of the Hollywood industry. Innocent and naive, she attended the supposed audition not knowing any better. You see, Patricia was a virgin from Kansas City, Missouri, who dreamed of being a star. She was not the only girl invited. In all, around 120 young women were invited to entertain approximately 300 drunken delegates at a remote ranch. Dressed in cowboy hats, short skirts, and boots, the girls were promised a hot meal and $7.50 for the entire day. Still under the impression that they were taking part in a screen test, the girls had their makeup done and were told to wait on the set. Knowing that the film business was difficult and wanting to be professional, they waited for their cue. However, the sales executives believed that the girls were a different sort of professional altogether. Without transport or telephones, the women had no means of escape and had to fend off the male advances as best they could. Douglas was brutally abused. 
Unlike others in Hollywood, she refused to be bought off and chose to press charges against MGM salesman David Ross. However, MGM hired the Pinkerton Detective Agency to dig up dirt on Douglas. When they could find none, they coerced people into claiming she was a promiscuous woman who had a sexually transmitted disease. The parking lot attendant initially said that he had seen her being attacked, but later changed his mind after being bought off by the executives. Just like that, Douglas's character was destroyed, and her assailant got away with the brutal abuse. Judy Garland was maltreated by her studio. When the talent in Hollywood was at its peak, a young girl named Judy Garland caught the eye of an MGM talent scout way back in 1935. She wasn't deemed the prettiest by their standards, but her voice and acting skills were like sparkling gems in a rough mine. So, they signed her up as fast as they possibly could. They had no doubt that she would make it in Hollywood. From that moment on, Judy was swept into the whirlwind of movie magic, playing roles that mirrored the girl next door, charming audiences with her talent six days a week, sometimes working from dawn till dusk. But the glitz and glamour of Tinseltown came with a price. To keep up with the demanding pace, the studio provided Judy with pills to pep her up during the day and knock her out at night. At just 19, Judy defied the studio's wishes and tied the knot. But there was no time for honeymoon bliss. She was back on set a mere 24 hours later. When she found out she was expecting, instead of celebration, there was coercion. The studio arranged for her to have the baby taken out, putting their bottom line above her well-being. As the years passed and Judy's star continued to rise, so did her reliance on those little pills. By the time she was in her 20s, she was dancing to the beat of amphetamines. The studio, claiming to protect her, kept her isolated from others, controlling every aspect of her life. But fame has a dark side, and Judy found herself trapped in its shadow. Even when she tried to break free, seeking solace in a hospital to regain her health, the studio's grip was relentless. They demanded she shed pounds, and Judy, desperate to please, fell back into the vicious cycle of pills and pressure. When the glitter began to fade and the applause died down, Judy found herself alone. The very studios that once celebrated her now turned their backs as her life spiraled out of control. In 1969, at the tender age of 47, Judy Garland took her final bow, leaving behind a legacy tarnished by the harsh realities of Hollywood. All those who were prone to speak up about what the studio did to her were paid off not to ever speak of it, lest it ruin their reputation. Clark Gable's DUI In 1933, Clark Gable, the charismatic leading man known as the King of Hollywood, found himself in a predicament that could have dethroned his illustrious career. He was arrested for drunk driving, a scandal that threatened not only his personal reputation, but also MGM's golden boy status. MGM, recognizing the potential damage to their star's image and the studio's box office revenues, swiftly sprang into action. With a network of connections and considerable influence, they embarked on a mission to shield Gable from the harsh glare of public scrutiny. First, MGM utilized its legal team to intervene in the legal proceedings. They pulled strings behind the scenes, employing high-powered attorneys to negotiate with prosecutors and law enforcement officials. Through backroom deals and strategic maneuvers, they managed to arrange for the charges against Gable to be dropped, sparing him from facing the full consequences of his actions. But the studio's efforts didn't stop there. To ensure that the incident received minimal publicity, MGM orchestrated a carefully crafted public relations strategy. They wielded their influence over newspapers, magazines, and other media outlets, leveraging their advertising dollars and relationships with journalists to suppress coverage of Gable's DUI arrest. Editors were persuaded to downplay the story or omit it altogether from their publications, while reporters were discouraged from pursuing further investigation. Any whispers of the scandal were swiftly silenced, buried beneath the glossy veneer of MGM's meticulously constructed image of Gable as the suave and debonair leading man. In the end, MGM's concerted efforts to cover up Clark Gable's DUI proved successful.
the incident faded into obscurity, a mere blip in the narrative of Gable's illustrious career. The King of Hollywood emerged unscathed, his crown untarnished by the shadow of scandal, thanks to the studio's powerful intervention and calculated manipulation of public perception. Confidential Magazine Scandal Cover-Ups Confidential was a magazine published quarterly from December 1952 to August 1953 and then bi-monthly until it ceased publication in 1978. It was founded by Robert Harrison and is considered a pioneer in scandal, gossip, and expose journalism. In time, Confidential became notorious for lifting the veil on the private lives of Hollywood stars, exposing their darkest secrets and most intimate indiscretions to the prying eyes of the public. But behind the glossy pages and sensational headlines lurked a shadowy world of backroom deals and hush money. Many of the celebrities featured in Confidential's pages were not merely victims of the magazine's relentless pursuit of scandal, but active participants in a high-stakes game of image management and damage control. In an era where a tarnished reputation could spell the end of a career, stars were willing to go to great lengths to protect their public personas. For some, that meant opening their checkbooks and paying hefty sums of money to Confidential's editors in exchange for favorable coverage or, more commonly, to suppress negative stories that threatened to tarnish their carefully cultivated images. These clandestine transactions took place behind closed doors, away from the prying eyes of the public and the paparazzi. Celebrities, fearful of the damaging repercussions of a scandalous expose, willingly handed over bundles of cash to Confidential's editors, effectively buying their silence and ensuring that their secrets remained safely tucked away from the prying eyes of the public. In some cases, the payments were made directly to the magazine's editors, who eagerly accepted the bribes in exchange for shelving damaging stories or even concocting flattering articles to boost the star's public image. For others, the transactions were facilitated through intermediaries, ensuring plausible deniability while still achieving the desired outcome of protecting their reputations. But while the flow of cash may have temporarily stemmed the tide of scandal, it did little to address the underlying issues of invasion of privacy and exploitation that plagued the world of celebrity journalism. Confidential Magazine may have thrived on the secrets and scandals of Hollywood stars, but its demise in the face of legal challenges and changing public attitudes signaled the beginning of the end for an era of unchecked gossip and sensationalism.